um, at 8 or about 6.30, uh, um, bring this meeting of the EC Conservation Commission to order uh, January 9th, 2013. In keeping with a, an act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted in the state of emergencies amended by Governor Baker on February 12th, 2022, this meeting will be conducted remotely over Zoom and attendance by commission members will be remote and remote attendance shall come to its quorum. This meeting is being recorded, audio and video, and likely to be available by ECAT at a later time. Um, in order to establish a quorum, we need to take a roll call. Benson, present. Carol, present. Spiel, present. And Roy Kaufel's present. Seeing that we have a quorum present, we will proceed with the meeting. Just one quick thing, it's 2023, not 2013. Oh, my. January 9th, 2023. Just for the record. I've not done that yet this year, and here I am. <laughs> um, so, first, um, so first up is uh, 350 Foundry Street, which is a notice of intent for a residential septic system. Did we get the DP number? We did. It's 1761. And for some reason, it's not letting me promote people. So Peter is on the call. Oh, now he's there. Good evening. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Awesome. So do we do just uh, for, for the record, do we have the butters notices, Jennifer, I assume we receive them? Yes. Okay, great. Peter, let us know what's going on. All right, uh, can you see the plan? Yep. Um, for the record, Peter Light with Collin Civil Engineering Group, uh, representing the homeowners tonight for a notice of intent relative to the repair of a failed uh, septic system. A uh, quick overview of the lot shows that we have um, significant wetland running through the southern portion of the site and on the northern portion um, entrance of the driveway we're also contending with an abutting drinking water well next door um, so just to point out we're 101 feet which is pretty much the minimum of that so we're kind of wedged between the existing well and the existing driveway and utilities and the wetland uh, resources to the south the existing system is out front it is in failure um, so we're proposing a new pump system to a pipe and stone leaching field in the existing lawn area. Uh, there will be a very minimal grade change on the southern portion, uh, with the exception of that, the work's all being done in the existing lawn. No significant changes to the site post-construction. We have proposed a bunch of um, conservation posts along the existing driveway on both sides and then along the existing tree line at the southern portion of the property. <clears throat> um, let's see, soil stockpile area we proposed between the work and the existing driveway. Um, we show dewatering details, sedimentation control details. Um, Pretty much all our normal notes on this one. Does the commission have any questions in particular? Uh, Jennifer, you could have comments. Um, Peter, did you want to mention the rubble pool in the riverfront area? Those are resource areas. Yes, they are. Um, so to the south, just off the property, there is a potential rubble pool delineated flags two through nine. Um, the 100 foot, I forget what we, what we call that, is it the 100 foot buffer to the vernal pool and that runs right along the proposed leaching limits and then 100 foot buffer to the resource. Yeah, so, right, so the first 100 feet would be the resource and then the 100 foot buffer falls off site. So again, um, it's really the only place we can put this new system. Unfortunately, it does fall within jurisdiction. Riverfront. The riverfront is shown by the darker blue. 
We show the 100 foot inner repairing limit and the 200 foot outer cutting through the northern portion. So the proposed work is approximately 150 feet off of the river. Uh, any other questions with that? Would you like to describe how you meet Title V and Wetland Protection Act with the septic system and the vernal pool? Uh, yes, I can just read it through the comments. Um, because the septic is close to the resources, we propose a liner around the whole system. Uh, we show the impervious barrier detail to the top of the plan. Um, so that will pre prevent any horizontal um, migration of contaminants towards the resource areas. Um, we are as close as 30 nine feet to wetland flag 14. Um, Title five, I believe is 50 feet. So we, our justification is it's, it's really the only place to go. Um, and we are proposing the liner to protect the resources. Okay, and what waivers do you need? Was that listed in the comments that I just, yeah, it would be in your application. Waivers, okay. Um, I see we're requesting a waiver from performance standards and under the town of Easton, which require a 50 foot no touch um, for sediment control in the leachy field will be 30 and 39 feet off the wetland. So, Yes, I believe this is our waiver request to work within 50 feet. Okay, so it's a waiver from performance standards for bordering vegetated wetland, the buffer zone, and the vernal pool? That is correct. Sorry, I didn't have that ready to go in front of me. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Um, any questions from the commission? Don't see anywhere where else they could put the thing. So, no, none <laughs> no for me. Else. No way. So, um, <clears throat> because the, the PVP isn't on the, their property, um, I would normally ask for permission to, to, to go there in the spring and certify it, but because it's off their property, I don't think we can get that permission. Mm -hmm. As part of this permit and process, but, um, that's a good point. I'll revise the draft order. And um, I think that the only other thing, and, and I think that the um, applicant has, um, you know, a bunch of down trees and everything else that's cut up like right up against the the, the lawn edge. Um, they've done a pretty good job of not tossing it into the into the, the wetlands or the wetland boundaries, but um, I think it's probably just a, a these, um, it's a, a good notice to make sure that, that uh, we probably keep that, that conversation going. I, I think that they're, I mean, this isn't, this is between whoever owns the property behind them and and and, uh, and them, but their, their lawn goes into the property behind them as well as the shed. So um, that's not for me to deal with, but. Uh, from a permitting standpoint, I'm just making a note here in the, the comments. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, th I think we're okay here. Um, you know, with, you know, Vernal Pool and an ACEC, we are literally probably in the 100 square feet that, that this fits in. So, um, it would be existing well. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, we could put it where the driveway is, but um, that's not going to work here because then it gets into the wellhead. So, so I think we're about where we have to be. So and, uh, I think that's about it. We have to grant the rules. So, um, I think that was it. I had one other thing, but uh, well, just the, the so it's about a one foot elevation. You're going to have to mount this by about one foot. <clears throat> um, it's not even so much a mounting as we're just pulling the existing grade out. 
So the only green change is at the very end of the field. The yep. yard naturally kind of slopes down right at the tree line. Yep. So it'll be about a foot, maybe two feet of uh, like a, a three to one slope. Yep. So nothing significant. And just the, just the, the northerly end of it. Correct. Yep. Or the easterly, or the easterly yep. Okay, any other questions? Any public comment for 350 Foundry? Uh, seeing none, Peter, I assume you want to close? Yes, we would like to close, please. Um, motion to close 350 Foundry Street. Carol second. Call bells, Carol second. Roll call vote. Instant aye. Carol aye. Speedy aye. Call bells aye. Any uh, any further deliberation from the commission? Uh, seeing none, I make a motion to issue a permit for work and order conditions noting that uh, we are going to make that one change to the conditions about the permit for. Speedy second. Uh, roll call vote. I can't hear you. Matt. Oh. Benson, aye. Carol, aye. Speedy, aye. Call fells aye. That was call fell speedy at four zero. Very good. All right, and um, should I stick around for 266 Washington? So COC. Uh, you guys asked for a continuance to the next meeting. Okay. All right, I wasn't sure of that. Well, we'll see you next time then. So Peter, can, can I just put it, and I don't know where this is, and I haven't talked to Jennifer today. Um, this is the second meeting where we've asked for a continuance on this COC because the, the, um, there's debris in the wetlands um, that we've asked to get cleaned up before we even consider this. So yeah. I mean, if we, had, if we had either done this now or two weeks ago, we would have denied this. So I don't know, it, would, it really isn't a big project um, to get this done. So and I, I know it's not, your, it's not your personal, it's not under the auspices of college engineering. I don't expect you guys to be out there and be responsible for doing it. But, um, maybe both Jennifer reminding the applicant plus you guys may be here. Yeah, I know we've reached out several times. Um, I personally haven't been involved in this this project or the communications back and forth. Yeah. But um, I know they've been they've been addressed multiple times. So hopefully we can uh, get on that and get things straightened for the next meeting. Fair enough. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Uh, next up. Uh, we have a, a continued hearing for 464 Foundry Street, which is a notice of intent for construction of a 28-unit residential facility with all appurtenances. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since we, actually it's probably been about a month since we last talked about the last time we continued the hearing. So here's Scott Rogers, I think. Can you hear just introduce yourself for the record and we're all good to go. All right, for the record, my name is Scott Rogers from JP Home Engineering. And we are continuing from the last meeting that was uh, December 19th. So there was a few uh, standing items for this project on Foundry Street. One was the revision to the O&M plan that was a request made by Beta Engineering that was uh, taken care of, addressed and, and uploaded to Permitize. The waiver request was uh, modified as well. That was revised today and uploaded um, to permitize as well. And uh, we had some comments on the draft script that we uploaded. That's for the NIPTES permit. Um, those comments and revisions we made hopefully this week and we can get that back out as well. So this particular project has gone through uh, numerous revisions uh, downsizing of the building, the parking areas, the developed areas, reduction in um, impervious areas and increase in green space. Um, one thing I want to point out to you that's been a comment that's been coming up or came up from the planning and zoning board. There is an increase in the unit count. It's going to be now 22 units. Uh, that's because of an increase in the affordability uh, units but there is no increase in the actual building footprint or height. There's just going to be a couple of units that are going to be downsized from two bedrooms to one bedrooms. Um, 
So there's no change in the building footprint. There's no increase in parking. There's no change to the site other than interior walls and, and such. So with that, I'd like to answer any questions that you may have at this point. Jennifer? Uh, Scott, if you would just go over your waiver request, please. So one of the changes that we made for the waiver request from the one that you saw last time, um, this site, the previous owner of 464 and 460 Foundry Street had apparently, you know, cut down trees in the buffer zone. I'm not sure they had permits for it. We have no record of that, but there's probably, um, you know, disturbance in the 50 foot buffer zone. And with that, we wanted to go ahead and, and replace buffer zone plantings and we had that that was done probably late last summer and we had some comments from uh, the conservation agent to increase the buffer zone plantings uh, so we talked to brad holmes from ecr and we worked with him on increasing the amount of plantings in that buffer zone so uh, we've done a bunch of work to improve the buffer zone from where it stands today and we've put up some signage as well to um, try to keep people from mowing in that buffer zone and basically let it restore back to its natural state. Is that the same question, Jennifer? Okay, so it sounds like your public benefit is the two additional buffer restoration areas totaling 2,429 square feet. You got it. And that was added to your waiver request today? I didn't see that online. What you uploaded had a revised, a revised date, but I didn't see what was different. Uh, that those square foot numbers were not added to. We just basically put in a little bit of blurbage, verbiage about how we improved the buffer zone, not specific numbers, if you will. So, so I think in, in general, just from feedback from me, um, I think that the, the waiver um, request should be a little bit more structured. I mean, there's three, there's three, um, there's three, right? When you're trying to get a waiver for performance standards, uh, there's three basic areas on, within an ACPC. There's some additional standards that I'm sort of getting at. And I think probably the best thing to do is, is to structure it in such a way that you make sure to address all three points, which is, um, alternatives, it's a least impactful alternative, um, and uh, the impacts have been mitigated, and then the third one is a public benefit. And I think Jennifer did her kindest and gentlest way to identify uh, what the um, what the, the public interest that could be considered with the way the project's been designed um, with this particular project. I think um, just to walk our way through this, so because I don't think it's in the in the, the waiver letter that you submitted today, there have been multiple alternatives that I've seen on this project um, with various um, um, different configurations, different impervious uh, um, increases in impervious, and I, I think that the way you've laid it out is this is the least impactful of those um, those particular design choices, and, and that's one of the things that we have to sort of alternatively say. You didn't just pick one design and say, well, this is going to be it. So you've considered other ones. Um, you decreased it from, you know, 30 units to 20 units or whatever the numbers are. And, and I think that the message, well, this is more of just a, a talking point more than anything else. And, and then I think, um, you know, talking about the analysis of what the impact was, and I think you've done a good job. This is the one thing I think is, is quite uh, understandable to us is that the impervious surfaces is actually decreasing within the buffer zone. Um, within the buffer zones uh, by by 100 feet, considering uh, what it was previously. So um, the one thing in ACEC was we, we need to take into account the the, um, the impervious in the additional 100 feet outside the buffer zone. Um, and but I think that those are mitigated by stormwater treatment and other things that have been included in the in the project. Um, and then the public benefit of the. The walking trail and the restoration areas, I think, is what you're proposing as the public benefit. Now, we have to decide whether that's 
in scale with what the impact is um, for what you're requesting a waiver. So that's my quick summary of this for everybody, as well as maybe even walking our way through what the waiver um, being proposed here is. But I think that for our purposes, Jennifer is working diligently on giving us a, a structure to have applicants use to, for waivers um, so that we get the one, two, three uh, of the three things that have to sort of be laid out for us because we have this issue <laughs> whenever we get a waiver request of not getting necessarily all three portions of, of what the waiver is. So, um, are there any, any commissions, comments from the, the, the commission on, on 464 Foundry? Um, is there any public comment on 464 Foundry? So seeing that, uh, Jennifer, are there any conditions here we have to cons consider? From the draft? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> I don't have it in front of me either. <laughs> it's really hard when I've got so many documents open. And no, I, I, it's um, not quite a boilerplate set of conditions, but it's pretty consistent with all the other conditions that we have, it's just mentioning um, the stormwater um, has to be followed, you know, maintained according to the operation and maintenance plan, and that will be an attachment. Um, and just that the signed pages of the SWIP will be submitted um, before we do pre construction meeting. And I know Scott will be working on those revisions. Is there any the text ahead of time? Is is there um so you have the O and M plan a satisfactory O and M plan and, and and so we'll get the SWIFT uh, sign pages of the SWIFT as well. Um, were there there was some discussion early on about maybe perhaps changing the the, the no disturb signs the, the wetland uh, no disturb signs to, to that was on their revised plan. Okay, so that's all set and that's okay. Just wanted to make sure we were all in agreement about what we were doing about that. So uh, so I think we're ready to close here. I don't think the commission has any additional information they need or want. Jennifer, you have anything? Are we are we absent anything necessary to that we should be waiting on them? Do they owe us anything? Yep. Um, aside from the revisions to the SWIP that will condition. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, Scott, I assume we want to close. That'd be nice. Thank you. Motion to close 464 founder. Second. second. Uh, call fills with Benson second. Uh, roll call. Benson aye. Carol aye. Spinney aye. aye. And call fills aye. So it was call fills Benson 4 0 to close. Um, any further deliberation? Um, uh, noting uh, that the waiver requirements have been met. Um, Make a motion to issue a permit for work and order of conditions for 464 Foundry Street, um, noting the conditions as proposed um, in the packet. Carol second. Uh, call fills Carol second. Roll call. Benson aye. Carol aye. Spade aye. Call fills aye. So, uh, call fills Carol 4 0. Uh, there we go, Scott. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank your time. You Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, next up is uh, 266 Washington. Uh, you said that um, we had, they had requested a continuance to, is that to 123? Right. Uh, make a motion to continue 266 Washington to uh, January 23rd, 2023. Carol, second. Call Carol, roll call. Lippins and I. Carol, I. Spade aye. Call fills aye. Uh, 670 Washington Street, the certificate of compliance for septic upgrade. All right. We have we have somebody here that. I'm not sure. Adam Carrero. I don't remember who. I don't know which project he would like to hear. Okay. 
uh, I don't know who he's for. You can raise your hand or something. Tell me if you're for this one. Uh, so 670 Washington Street. Uh, Jennifer, you want to give us a rundown? I can share my screen if you want. Um, yes, that was just for a septic system upgrade um, at a commercial building. Um, the, the main thing that I saw was when we did our pre-construction meeting, looking at the existing pavement, and the comment was make sure you don't go beyond the existing pavement, otherwise you're required to do stormwater management. When I did the final site inspection, paving is probably one or two feet, well, one to three feet in some spots further than the existing pavement. Um, and then they just put stone um, along the edge. So they did go further than they were supposed to. Okay. Uh, any uh, questions from the commission? Comments, concerns. So uh, I guess the decision is: do we um, allow the incursion into the further uh, 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 of the pervious surface, or make them correct it? Jennifer, would you consider that a de minimis addition or significant? Well, any amount of pavement uh, will change the runoff into the wetland, um, so it would be faster. So what would it take to uh, make that change to a smaller footprint? Well, they would have to saw cut the extra paving and then remove that. And we had a conversation with these folks here. But yeah, I guess they were aware that this was on the agenda tonight and nobody came. Uh, no one came, no one replied to the staff report. Um, just, I don't, don't remember anybody replying to the staff report about it. Um, there, there was also some erosion on the, the um, next to the retaining wall, up to one edge of the, of the new pavement up top. Oh, okay. We say this is about 200 square feet in total of additional asphalt, but did I just make that up? Well, it's about one to two feet, well, one to three feet in, in spots. Um, the part of the, the curve in the back and then along the back stretch. So it could be pretty close to where they show the stone. It's a little difficult to tell on that hand yeah. sketch. I mean, the proposed plans were regular engineering plans that we've seen. This is hand drawn for some reason. Yeah. It's funny how the net errors are never less asphalt. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really torn on this because, I mean, I, I just, I think it's a lot to deny a certificate and have someone go chip out three feet of asphalt. But I, I just would like someone to tell me how it happened, that it was a mistake, some type of an explanation as to why it wound up like that. I don't know how anyone else in the board feels. Yeah, I mean, it's simple. I don't know if anyone's kind of curious as well. So, yeah. Although I was there at the site, don't go beyond this point. I mean, it was. Um, we made a big point of talking about that during pre-construction meeting, so they were aware of it. Yeah, 
and I think it's one of those supervision problems, that, potential supervision problems that happens where you know, the communication on day one doesn't get communicated to the asphalt guy that comes in on day eight. You know, where is he supposed to go? And you know, he thinks, well, it's, it's all reclaimed asphalt and go right up to, to the guardrail. Right, it's there, and that's I'll just make it look nice in a nice curve, and we'll be all set, right? That's that's how they yeah. think. And, yeah, I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying that's you know, what happens. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm with Ben. I, I, if it was a, if we had gotten some sort of response or something, it, it would almost feel differently than somebody just ignoring us and hoping it just gets you know swept under the rug. So. I mean, I, can you give this one more meeting? Is is that just kicking the can? And ask them, you know, just a letter come and explain to us how this happened. Um, and if we don't get anything, you know, we're we're going to deny this. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, obviously, we can't. Uh, the, the board could vote against you know that decision, of course. But that would be my my sort of individual thought here. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is one of those cases where you know. You could go three two on this one way or the other, you know, pretty easily. I don't know what it is. I, I don't have my. I haven't voted yet. Nobody knows. Yeah. So I think that. Um, I think given the circumstances, that there's a potential for us being concerned that it it isn't in compliance with the existing order conditions. I mean, that's really the same thing, right? So. So I mean, the staff report was from 1229. Okay, well, I mean, let's just, let's not have you spend, you know, a half a day trying to fix this. Let's have you spend five minutes. And then yeah. We'll go from there. That's good. So let's make a motion to continue 670 uh, Washington Street till January 23rd. Benson, second. All those Benson second roll call. Benson aye. Carol aye. Spade aye. Call those aye. Okay, next up is 10 Avery Way, uh, formerly uh, was filed under 233R Lincoln Street. Correct. That was something that had been appealed to DEP for the state um, permit, but the bylaw was not appealed. And so we had a Site inspection with the DEP on the 29th, and looks like everything is ready to close. The buffer signs are up. Um, operation and maintenance plan was included. Uh, so we have that as built plan was changed um, to make sure it had the right street name um, and a few other minor changes. Uh, the area is stabilized, um, so it's ready for a full certificate under the bylaw, though, not just under the bylaw. So can you give me the um, the reason why the four pines were taken down? I'm just curious. Um, large hazardous pines that um, they thought were leaning toward the house. Okay. Um, any questions from the commission? Um, any public comment on uh, Ken Avery Way, uh, also known as 233 Pine? Uh, seeing none, uh, make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for Ben Avery Way 233 R Lincoln under Easton 1543. Carol, second. Call post Carol, second. Roll call vote. Benson, aye. Carol, aye. Still aye. Uh, call post aye. Uh, next up is uh, 7 Kembane Drive. This is a request for certificate compliance for a restoration area. Yeah, I believe there was a permit for a house and then the restoration work wasn't finished. So they applied just for the restoration work. Uh, so all of the buster buffer zone restoration work has been completed. There are at least two years worth of monitoring reports from a wetland consultant. Sediment control should be removed, um, but the buffer zone markers are installed. So they're ready for a full. Very good. Uh, any questions from the commission? Um, Jennifer, can we just send a um, in, in sort of in, in noted, noting to them that they should be removing the sediment control 
is to also remind them that they should not be dumping anything into the wetland or wetland buffers. Yep. Um, any public comment on Seven Ken Bain? Uh, seeing none, uh, make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance with Seven Ken Bain. Bill. Carol, second. Roll call vote. Benson, aye. Caroline. Spadia. Caulfell's aye. That was Caulfell's Carol, second. Um, 370 uh, Center Street. This is a request for a certificate of compliance for construction of a duplex hall with associated other agreement and changes. Uh, the approved plan showed a retaining wall in one section. It looked like they carried it through um, at least twice uh, the length, but they didn't go beyond the limit of work. Um, the markers are up on the posts now. Um, sediment control still has to be removed. Um, properly dispose of any trash. Didn't get a reply from the staff report on this one either. Um, and some of the gutters might be causing some erosion um, that would lead over the driveway and then down the retaining wall. Once that's stabilized, it, it should be okay. Just something to note. Okay. Um, any, uh, any commission comment on this one? Uh, any public comment on 370 Center Street? Um, and I make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 370 Center Street. Carol, second. Call for Carol. Second. Roll call. Vincent, aye. Ben? Carol, aye. Speedy, aye. Call for aye. Um, next up, we have uh, Jennifer, enforcement. Yeah, just two updates. Um, the homeowner at 33 Gilmore did uh, get in touch with me after the last letter that we sent. Her landscaper is actually away for the month. Um, when he comes back, if it is not um, suitable weather to remove the leaves from the wetland, uh, then we'll have to wait until spring. We both put the dates in our calendar to check with in with each other if that um, gets into April. And then 40 Elizabeth, I did the inspection on the 4th with the homeowner. Um, all the material was removed uh, from the wetlands, but the post does need to be set in concrete. Um, and the slope toward the wetland where all the material was removed does need to be stabilized. So he had wood chips on site. I suggested he use those and then give me a call as soon as that's done so I can go and do the final inspection. So those are both um, moving along. Fantastic. Good to hear. Thank you. Um, minutes from 1219, um, I have no, uh, no comments or corrections. Anybody have any questions, comments? Anybody want to make a motion to approve? Uh, just one very nitpicky item. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> on page 291, Union, um, the date, there's April, and then the date is missing, 2022. We may want to tag a date on that. Okay. Okay. So this is on the plans. Uh, without, you're just saying it says April 2022. Just want to get it. Yes. Fair enough. Anybody else? So does someone want to make a motion with uh, that change to the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes of 12-19-22. Second. Uh, Carol Benson, second. Roll call. Benson, aye. Carol, aye. Roll the aye. Roll zero. Uh, chair updates. So in your packet, we uh, distributed this last meeting as well. Um, it was a list of the potential topics that we could spend some uh, of our time on over the next year and focus. 
um, and try moving forward. Uh, we have an awful lot on our plate, and uh, um, I think that we tend to sort of get stuck on the week to week what needs to get approved and hearing, and then then we sort of ask Jennifer, Jennifer, what's going on with these other things? Where it really should be uh, us also uh, um, being involved and making sure that we get some of these projects done. And there's a lot of stuff on here that I think a lot of us would want to be involved in. Um, in fact, there's stuff on here that a lot of us have been involved in. Um, and so um, I just want to sort of come up with, you know, we can't do all 17 of these. Well, we could, but it would take an awful lot of resources to get there. And Jennifer would have my head and probably. Um, and, and if we committed to all 17, we wouldn't get them all done. And so my, my, my goal here is to commit to some of them. And hopefully we make good progress on some of them. Um, and I think there are some that maybe I'm just actually trying to get to make sure I have the same one. Oh, you know, because that, Jennifer added some uh, funds available to us as well. Uh, that um, that we can prioritize and we can try and get done this year. Jennifer can start reaching out to some uh, consultants or vendors to try and deal with some of the stuff. We can also talk about amongst ourselves who wants to assist on which projects and help Jennifer and, uh, um, and, and anyone else who's involved. Um, so I think that from my standpoint, uh, why don't we go around the, the, the horn here a little bit and see what things everyone has on their mind and then uh, we can then start pairing it down maybe a little bit. Jennifer, any comments before we start on that? No, sounds good. Okay. Mike, you want to go first? Sure. So, so I think one's a giveaway. I, I, I very much love the uh, Tusk Farm. So the master plan of Tusk Farm to me means a lot just because you know that, that place I feel like it's been a draw, a ball drop for a number of years, and a, a very long time. And, it, it, and I think it has an opportunity right now at this time with our commission especially to get it to really it, it could be really awesome very simple so that's a really cool plan i don't think it's going to take a ton of our time and I, I, I grab a lot of it and i'm cool with that and i think we get done another one that's really stuck with me and this stuck with me in the past uh was the was the wheat and farm restoration and when we had the forester come in that, that i always spoke to was something i've always done in there and felt concerned especially that we that bigger pine forest area that he expressed you know his nervousness with you know, how it's looking right now. So, yeah, it's a crucial part of our force. It's a big part of our conservation. It's one of right, it is our biggest. So, with, for me, those are like our top two. I'm not, I don't even have a third. I third's open. I don't know what they're talking, but for me, those are like two that really mean a lot. I think can be done with not a ton of resources, not a ton of our time, but it can be done well and quickly. So, that's good. Okay. Al? I had the master plan marked as a uh, <clears throat> potential project, so if Mike could be willing to accept me as a helper, I'd more help on that one. <clears throat> I'm already helping Jennifer on the Tufts farm repairs, the cleaning, pest control, chimney, da 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 da. I sent out the RFQs and, and provided those to Jennifer, so it takes a little bit off her plate. So if, if it's okay with her, I'll continue to help on the, the repairs and the maintenance of Tufts Farm. Um, I also had the, uh, the Wheaton Farm barn restoration. Uh, that, that there's money that was uh, allocated in, in 2014 and then also again in 2020. So we have, um, I believe a total of $204,850. There's other beliefs it's one hundred and ninety. dollars So tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, we'll resolve that issue. Yeah. Wow. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the opens uh, the grants, um, Tough Farm Windows, that one and maybe electrification could be wrapped up in some kind of a package where we take a look at the insulation capacity of the farmhouse and whether that can be effectively uh, electrolyzed you know with better windows better insulation 
and, and uh, ground source heat pumps or air to air heat pumps. So uh, that's something I've done in the past, in the heat pump, but I've got to get up to date on where the latest uh, efficiencies are at. So we can figure out some kind of uh, cost perspective on that. Commissioner Neal. Yep. Okay. Uh, ben? So, believe it or not, I think the one that I'm most interested in is the Wheatley Farm Barn restoration. I actually went to summer camp there for about three years. Uh, I have some amazing memories of that place just being this like really cool woodsy place with a bunch of like lizards and live animal tanks in it and just being a ton of fun as a kid growing up um and sort of being able to go through nrt there and I, I i drive by there all the time i just think it's sort of in a sad and dilapidated state and it would be great to have that up functioning in a way that it can be used i think nrt summer camp has made its home at sheep's pasture but i'm sure we can find something well, good to do over there and they're using part of it now too and it's not even to their liking so yeah it's dangerous. Yeah, it's, it's not great. <laughs> um, I, I think, but I, honestly, I think we may be able to recruit some volunteers to do some work over there um, in a way that doesn't come up with these prevailing wage issues that wind up with us paying crazy amounts of money for relatively simple projects. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in a regulations overhaul. And I guess part of that is just I feel like I should have a better understanding of the existing <laughs> regulations. And I think it'd be a fun opportunity to sort of, or a good opportunity to sort of dive in and go through our bylaw and, and sort of gather an understanding of what does and doesn't work from the perspective of the town and, and the people that we work with all the time. Um, and then I'm interested in the new trail at the flyway area. And, you know, on, on the realm, or I guess in the vein of new trails, Really, anything at the Gill property, I think I'd love to see that side of town get a little bit more access to trails and recreation space, which I don't think that's on the list, but just it sort of made me think of it. That might be its own year of a project to tackle. <laughs> well, there is actually a Gill property master plan. So, implementation. Yeah, well, it, it was it was basically there isn't much we can do out there. That was the master yeah. plan. So. But there were there were a bunch of ideas that were thrown out about kill property, about trails and whatnot. Um, I think that one of the biggest ones we had was making it more sort of a um, an active recreation trail with some exercise uh, stations uh, throughout the, the property. Um, even though it's there's a lot of wetlands out there, there's a lot of upland as well. I mean, um, some good spots to be able to do that. There's also, as I mentioned before, there's four or five rental pools right readily accessible off of the the, um, the easement that the, um, that if we could get a station in there that you know for a month, you know, it would be quite a, an event to go out there and they would see plenty of wildlife. Yeah. In those rental pools. So we could get up some educational material that might be very interesting as well. So I'm just saying that because that my one of the first things I did when I joined the commission was on that five point three. Ended up being the chair when I, I didn't join it as the chair, and then I turned out to be the chair. And I, you know, shocking, right, Jennifer? Um, <laughs> you couldn't imagine that happening. I don't know. So I'll I'll take a look. I didn't mean to detract. But I'll take a look at the master plan. I actually, now that you say it, recall seeing it. I just I don't think I ever internalized it. So yeah. spend some time with it. Yeah, and there's some work to be done out there about cleaning up the property too. So. If you ever want to do anything, that's the first thing you sort of have to do. So I'm just given my own experience with it. It's um, it's there. Um, I, I think that from from my perspective, the tough farm tenancy is something we have to do. Yeah. Um, and, and so um, that that's got to be on our list. And I, I'm glad to see um, Al uh, providing an awful lot of support there. Um, but once we get tenants in, we'll be working with them on how to incorporate the master plan into that um, into the tenancy. Um, that's because of part of what we wanted to do here. I think that the master plan in and of itself, I think we'll, if we get to, if we choose that as a project, I think we should probably figure out phases. Um, what needs to be first, what needs to be second, what, what, what may be way out in the future as we get to the type of things. Um, because it, it was quite ambitious. It was certainly done by a, um, 
some people that really have the overall vision of the entire property, but it's um, a lot for us to build those two point homes without having a quarter million dollars, two hundred thousand dollars. Um, if we had that kind of money, we could, you know, hire people and do it. But you know, a lot of it's going to be very much organized by us. Um, I think that we, um, the the Clifford Grant tree rail routing, trail rerouting, um, has to get done. Um, now, I think that can be done depending on when Jennifer can get the permit filed relatively soon um, and relatively easily, to be quite honest. Um, Jennifer and I um, actually visited the channel last week, um, and I, I think that that's um, a relatively straightforward. We actually do not have to remove any border. Um, Fantastic. So it, it is matter, a matter of just uh, closing up the trails um, that go onto the other property, uh, carving a new trail. Um, through the, the property, it's about 250, 300 linear feet to connect the trails again, um, and, and we go from there. And so, um, it, it's right up that old stone wall, right, where that'll be the rear up. It is fantastic. That that couldn't be. I think you might actually get compliance with that route. You know, if to close off the other one and, and sort of point yeah, people this cool. way, I think you might get. Well, I, I think once, once, you, once you open up the other trail, I don't think. And we're going to move rocks and logs and stuff and, and close up. Enough. People would have to climb over a rock wall or logs to, to do it. So I, I think our intention is to, to try and close them off and really make sure that you know that gets a chance to be natural. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to note a possible conflict or, or um, in Wheaton Farm barn restoration, I had heard that there was a meeting going to be held at the farm for vertical construction uh, work on the part of a general contractor and I requested permission to join that unit but uh, Wayne didn't think it was a good idea so I was disinvited. Um, <laughs> so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I don't think that's a conflict. Willingness to work with us or whatever but I, it's a big question mark in my mind. I think that may just be a little too early, Al. I wouldn't take that personally. Well, I've already spent quite a bit of time on, on that, uh, trying to get uh, contractors who could do that type of uh, work with a colonial you know, barn or uh, timber peg uh, work. So I have a number of possible candidates can, that can do the work, but not not all of them that, that may be located in the area. I'm still looking for others that are qualified to do that historical renovation. Okay, that'd be a good list to have. Um, Rory, what else do you I have for after Clifford Grant? Um, so I think that, that um, if, uh, I mean, I'd like to have us uh, do a regs overhaul or at least start one this year. I don't think we, we, we may not get to completing it. But um, I, I do think that it would be beneficial for us and the town to have a, a clearer, more concise regulations. Um, if, we, if in our regulations review, we determine that we want to propose bylaw changes, um, that's something that would have to wait till next year's uh, annual town meeting. And we probably don't have enough time to get it on this year's annual town meeting, is why I'm having that, that. So we'd be talking about 2024 to make those changes. Yeah. Um, so I'm just saying, but we can work within the, the bylaw and, and just there's plenty of work to do on the regulations i mean they are a little bit of a repetitive convoluted um meandering uh, sense you know jennifer I, i'm i didn't i don't i have no ownership over them so i can say that um and you as an outsider and you know me six years ago as an outsider when i first read them i, I literally said oh my god we said this is more in it and plain english is always better Oh my God! Yes, and that's into, in fact we've had that conversation with the commission. Not this version of the commission, but other versions of literally, um, you know, having a single set of what you know performance standards are. Yeah. You know, a single set of, of what waiver standards are. Not to have it repeated every section. Meant to be different. They really aren't meant to be yeah. different. In, in Written in English and maybe linking to a worksheet. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Read any mass general law. That's exactly how you want to not write the regulation. Correct, and, and they're they're written that way. So, <laughs> but but as somebody who has read many mass general laws, I actually don't have a problem reading them. But I can understand how many many other people 
are challenged to follow along and get to the same place that we need to get to. Um, we, we don't want to we don't want the commission the, the public to feel intimidated by it or that it's a barrier or that we are um, you know really people that want to you know, deny everything you know, we don't deny we, we work with every applicant that comes in front of us to get in conformance with the regulations. We just want them to not have to ask us well, I don't understand what the regulations are so you know, we have to tell them and that's what we do a lot of the time right I mean that's really something we do so. I think there's a value to that. If we could start that project this year, I wouldn't put it on our list of let's try and get that finalized. Yeah. Unless somehow we it falls into place and we find somebody who can, can consolidate these regulations and give us a clear, concise, instead of a 70 or 80 page uh, regulations, get it down to you know, 25 or 30 that makes sense. And as Ben says, clear, concise English. You know, so um, not, not to, uh, not regulatory ease. So um, I think that um, <laughs> now here's part of the problem. You know, when I went through this list, everything on this list I want to do, right? So, um, you know, I want to do vernal pools. I want to do, you know, uh, um, trail planning. I want to do all this stuff. I want to do get back to the signs. I keep on raising the issue about signs. And I, I know Jennifer's uh, actually got somebody doing sign inventory for us. So when we're ready to do it, uh, we can do it. Um, but I really. What's that? You want trail signs? Uh, property signs. Oh, property signs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we replaced about eight or nine of them uh, first time. Uh, we've got some money in our funds uh, for uh, one of the signs we were supposed to replace up on Monty Pond. So um, there's some things. I, I saw a great article about Monty's Pond. Where was they used to do ice up there? They used to used to they used to make ice. Oh, yeah. You know, so it was just a fantastic sort of historical. Realm. There's a lot of historical. References here in Easton, if you know where to find them. Um, it really just was very interesting to sort of say, I know where that is. <laughs> so, um, but but I think that from, um, is there anything else on here, Jennifer, you think we have to do that we should be uh, putting ahead of the six or seven things that we've talked about here? Well, not ahead of, but we need to be working on 13. That's the open space and recreation plan, because that. Right. Once that's approved, that's where all the grant money comes from. Right. If you want to do any of these projects, we need a an approved open space plan. And the open space plan takes about a year to do. There's usually a subcommittee. Um, it's a it's a big project. It's um, valid for seven years though. So is this something that, that Stephanie is is working on at all? Because I know that's usually not just done by us, it's also done by you know, multiple. Okay. Yeah, and the whole, you know, we get recreation obviously involved, the whole thing. So, I mean, it's like a multi faceted approach to this, from my, my recollection. Yeah, well, when I started, we were down to the one list from EEA, the Division of Conservation Services. There's one person who reviews and approves all open space plans in the state. Um, or, letter was from 2017 it hadn't been worked on i tried to finish all the extra things that this person wanted um and then she came back with another letter saying you have to explain how you advertise these things to the environmental justice community you know i wasn't here <laughs> right 2017 this um you know this is the letter and the plan was from seven years ago so Basically, we just dropped it and said, we're going to have to start all over again next year. Just forget about this old list and we'll just start over. Okay. So we know it has to begin. Um, well, this I week. would be interested in being on a subcommittee for that. Great. If we need to go talk to the planning board, and that always gets challenging because there are meetings at the same time. Mm -hmm. But maybe we can make something work where if we have a joint session to start, gather, or they can just gather a subcommittee on their own. And, get something on the books so that that's actually being advanced and we're tracking that forward because it sounds like that's what makes it rain on everything else. Yeah, the grants are um, pretty significant. Yeah. Well, we, we, can certainly get use some stuff done. We, we can certainly get a lot of stuff done if we can get, get the grant money for it too. So mm -hmm. you, you've shown that, you know, and, you, and your predecessor as well has shown that, that we can get that money if we file for it, so. Yes. What type of funds are you uh, talking about? 
these are land funds, so um, the land acquisition, um, any type of active recreation, um, they can get grants as well. Land and water conservation fund, usually it's um, 250000 or 500000 depending on the type of project. The town gets a certain percentage reimbursement rate. Um, I'm not sure what Easton's is. Um, so worth, worth going after. I, I, I'd be willing to understand. It's, it's, it's a it's, year and a half of serious pain, but then it's worth getting the money. So <laughs> I've written four before. It's not you know, something new to me. It's just getting through that approval process with the state. Yeah. Um, so that does need to be uh, something we work on this year. But typically they we go through the select board and they appoint an open space plan committee. Right. They have seen that done in the past. Um, yeah, I'd say typically that's the way it's been done here as well. So. So, so should we request that of the select board so it's on their agenda? Um, we can do that. Yeah, I can ask Stephanie how she would like how that usually proceeds. So I doubt that would be a controversial, <laughs> a controversial vote for the select board. You never know. So, so I mean, I think that there's a couple of things on here. Um, so, uh, the Clifford Grant Trail rerouting is a relatively finite project, right? It's not large scale. You know, I think it's probably a, a one one or two weekend type of thing to sort of get it done. Um, and I think we can garner enough uh, support. I, I've heard offline from many people about what, just tell me when and where, and I'll, I'll be there to help. And, and so I think that, that once we get the plan done, um, we can, um, in, in a permit filed, um, that we can probably get going on that and, and, and deal with that relatively quickly. And then, you know, that, that project it comes off the list. It's on the list, but it, it comes off the list relatively quickly and we can start, you know, allocating resources somewhere else. Um, you know, the Tufts Farm tenancy, um, you know, I, I don't know what, we haven't gotten to that point in the, in the, the uh, agenda yet, but, you know, bids were due today. Um, so we will have, a, I hope we will have a tenant soon, um, and then we have to deal with having a tenant and and dealing with that and incorporating the master plan into that I think is something that we have to start working towards. So if we can get, you know, I know that you know, both Mike and Al are you know, uh, invested in that project already. Um, and so you know, guiding that and providing the support to, to Jennifer so she isn't totally burdened by what's going on out there, it's, it would be great. Um, I don't know what it's going to take to get that forestry plan started. Um, oh, we were just wait, um, actually when I met with Phil Benjamin, the forester, last year, we were just waiting for um, probably next year. So this year we'll wait for the grant round to come out, um, which we don't need the open space plan for. This is a separate funding source. Um, but we would we wouldn't have been able to cut this year anyway because in that stand there weren't enough pine cones. So if you cut the trees. Um, and the pine cones didn't already drop, then you wouldn't have the seed source for the next year. So you tend to phase it that way anyway. So we didn't lose anything. You, we weren't going to cut this year. Okay. I mean, even even if even if we weren't, I, like I want to have a plan in place. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, I, I want to engage Phil, or, or I know Phil is getting near retirement or whatever. So uh, whatever who the next Phil is, and, and get that in place, and know that like we want to we want to work on um, you know that that plan out there. You know, I, I think that that's an incredible, incredible piece of property downtown. It borders borderland, to be honest, from from its its uh, um, ability to, to to be a wildlife habitat and uh, and passive recreation. So I I really think the world of it, and um, I think because of climate change and everything else, we should be paying attention to it so that we have uh, the carbon sink that, that it's meant to be for this town, right? So. Um, you know, that, that holds a lot of, uh, of carbon and we need to, to make sure that it's healthy 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now. What we do today is going to do that because when you get these storms to take all those trees down and, you know, then it's a mess. It's not, it's not controlled at all. So, yeah. Um, wheat and Farm Barn, that, that, that's, uh, so, so I think there's support. I mean, obviously, we voted CPA's funds in the neighborhood of 
two hundred thousand dollars plus or minus. I, I'm not going to get into that. I think there was two different sets. One was for some engineering plans, and then there was some additional monies to actually do the work. Um, I, I think we might have put it off the bid once and gotten insufficient bids or, or, or whatever it was. And, um, it, I really would. I mean, I, I'm with Ben. There's enough people like Ben in town, but it's it's a piece of of, of town history. That's why we got the CPA funds to do it. Um, um, so. I'd like to figure out if there's a way to move this forward in any way, shape, or form um, this year. Um, at least take the steps to figure it out. Um, maybe we get some traction on it. Maybe we don't. I mean, I think getting anything done is, is, has been indicated here on the prevailing wage is very challenging right now. Um, and so I, I just, I'd like to know where we stand on it. And if, you know, I'd like to know that are we going to have to go back to CPA and say, oh, we need another 125 to get this done now, two years, three years later, right? Well, we met with the company uh, right before Christmas. They um, were looking at stabilizing um, the main structures um, that would take up the bulk of the funding. They're supposed to come up with the scope for us and all the bid documents so that we can move it forward. Well, what like question I had with the, with that company, are they used to doing uh, antique barns? Yes. Or are they just a construction company? No, they're qualified. Okay, thank you. That's good. So I think that um, our takeaway on this um, is Tufts Farm, uh, the forestry plan. So essentially, the first six um, plus the open space and recreation plan start on that, and then you know maybe start looking at some other things for next year. I mean, even things that you know Ben you know raised about flyway on uh, trail. Um, additions or even Gill property trail. So I mean, I think it's okay for us to, to maybe not put that as something we're gonna get done this year, but as opposed to we should be looking at. That flyway trail may naturally work its way back to us also. Well, that was... the, the, pro the problem, and, and, and we've, we've wanted to do that, um, but it's just a matter of finding the time. Oh yeah. You know, but I mean, there was, was, wasn't there, there was a presentation probably six months ago where some volunteers came in and talked about doing the addition. So I my thought is I wouldn't be surprised if they came back. Agreed, but I, want to I, think, I think that we have to have an overall trail plan in order to ah. do that, right? right. I, I think that's that's the deal here is that it's not a matter of just saying, okay, we're going to do this one trail because we have to get out there and do a master master trail plan. Okay. So, and maybe we do it for just, truck, just fly away and we'll do it for another property some other time, but um, I think it's not a matter of simply, you know, having a presentation at a meeting and saying, okay, to do it, because I think we would do it if that was the case. I think we want to take a little bit thoughtful approach here to this, because I think that we're, you know, I think we want to make sure that we're not impeding on, on a lot of our habitat as we expand our, our, um, our passive uh, trail um, use on that piece of property. And it's a combination of both, right? And we've got to have both. It's just a matter of it. that's what it is. It has to be thoughtful. And that's just my thought process. And I'm not saying that the, the approach that's being made right now isn't thoughtful. I'm just saying that it's not a matter of saying, yeah, let's get another trail. Yeah. I'm going to be mindful to that. The neighbor to the right of that, it's actually in Stoughton, but to be mindful of it, it's that trail that's coming from Ames Long Pond going up across it. They're now building in to our property, such a border in that eastern line. So that's going to be a big impact from above. So that trail we want to build for fire is actually going towards that. So it's just thinking of wildlife, thinking of movement, thinking of what you're taking and, 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 and you know, moving around, it's, it's crucial and I think it's key. Because uh, that's going to be big and that's beginning. I just started putting up fire property signs and they're doing their test pits, so that's coming. So I think it's really well flagged. They spent a lot of time in this year, so it's, you know, it's, a, it's a large area. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, it's just you know, it's getting something we won't ever see because it's not it's not eastern, but it's it's but it's in that but that's that whole chunk of that flyway property. It's still part of it, even though it's stoking. So it's it's right in that back corner where we want to build that trail. So 
some of them are. If I can go back to Tough Swan for just a minute. Um, the uh, barn is in kind of disrepair over there as well, but that's a cinder block with partial cedar shakes on the side, but with a lot of it missing. And I'm wondering if the commission would be interested in trying to look at alternative um, siding for that barn, which kind of, you know, keeps it in the, uh, you know, the historical vein, but yet um, maybe will provide a better siding than uh, cedar shakes. And I'm specifically thinking about board and batten, but before I do a lot of in, in steel, it, it'll last something like 80 years and it looks pretty decent. Um, so, I, I, I think that, yeah, I mean, I think, I think, uh, you know, um, making enough maintenance and repairs over there and, and, and stabilizing the existing buildings is what we want to do out there. It's part of the master plan. Right? We already took down. One of the buildings it just was not salvageable and i don't want any building to get to that point again out there so i think that, that we should be looking at what those type of projects are and jennifer has pointed out that we've got ninety six thousand dollars in the tough small fund um now that will get eaten up pretty quickly as we start to do projects um, but um, there is money to do that in small projects um and um We'll need to understand what that is but i agree with you that if we've got buildings that we believe that if left in the current condition will be five or ten years from now we'll be talking about bringing them down and let's let's not do that we, we want this to be a farm that, that works we want this to be a place where the public um is able to see and, and, and walk by and not look like an eyesore I mean, that's really what we want to have so I, I agree thank you for bringing that Okay, so then you, you wouldn't mind if I spent some time on that then and uh, we'll get some options and see how much they cost to siding to put in and how long they're going to last under just, the climate conditions. Yeah, just just work it all through Jennifer and, and okay. yeah, we'll have to, to work with it. You know, and I think that if there's something that needs to be done out there, we should be considering it and finding our options to do so and figuring out if it's a you know, $15,000 project or a fifty. dollars Okay, Jennifer, you're stuck with me. <laughs> Quite all right. You're doing a lot of work for me. <laughs> um, any, anything else uh, that we need to consider at this point? Does this help us at all, Jennifer, to keep us focused? Oh, it does, yes. Um, there are a few things on here that I'll be doing anyway. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still working at Sam Wright West Wetland Restoration Project. There's right. coming up that we're working on. Um, outreach materials. I'm always working on those. And then looking at. Yeah. Do we have? Do we have enough? I know in the past we've had uh, summer interns and whatnot, and I don't know what your capacity to 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 deal with an intern is uh, for the summer. Um, so we have a replacement clerk trained. Yeah. Probably not a lot. Right. Right. I mean, I just know some of these things. If we could find the the resources, the human resources to assist, um, it, it would be helpful, but I, I entirely sympathetic to the fact that you know, giving a, a, a clerk up, you know, is uh, a permanent. could probably get you a law student on grant for bylaw review, if that's something you're interested in. Sure. Talk about that. that sounds yeah. cool. Okay. Any, um, any further comment from the commission on this? And I'll actually make sure there's no public comment. Any any public comment on our discussion on uh, the Conservation Commission uh, uh, working projects for the future? Okay, so seeing none, uh, we will close this topic. Thank you all for giving the feedback. I appreciate it. Next up is environmental planner updates. Yeah, my only update is the Tufts Farm bids were due today. We received three of them and they went out to Mike and our Agricultural Commission representative in an email uh, today. So we'll be 
you know, reviewing all of those proposals and um, coming up with a recommendation for all of you. Okay, it's exciting. Yeah, th thank you for everyone's hard work on getting us to this point on Tusk Farm. Um, I know it's 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 been a lot of work um, in the office. It's been a lot of physical work out of the property. Um, it's been a lot of uh, other meticulous work in getting vendors lined up and everything else to, to make sure that we've got a uh, habitable uh, residence and we're, we're coming to town. So I, I do appreciate everything that everyone's done on this particular project because this is one of those cases where it really would be would have been a challenge for a single person to do this. Uh, bringing the commission together would really been a, a great thing. So I do appreciate it. And that's it. Any other uh, topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair? None. Okay. Uh, anybody want to make a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, that's Carol uh, Benson, second. Roll call. Benson, aye. Carol, aye. Speedy, aye. All fills aye. Board the order adjourn. Thank you all. Thank Appreciate you. it. Take care.